Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This idea got started during Governor Deval Patrick's trade mission to Israel. I was a member of the delegation, which took place a year ago, March. We went there to sell Massachusetts as the home away from home for Israeli businesses looking to expand into the United States. One day, we were doing an event at a major Israeli university for about 200 clean energy entrepreneurs. In the front of the room was Governor Patrick. The Secretary of Energy and Environment, and the CEO of the Mass Clean Energy Center. Now, a little bit late, a gentleman walks in in the back of the room. No big deal. But rather than sit down and not be disruptive, he walks across the back, down the side, into the front row, and he sits in the middle of the front row. So something was on his mind. It's time for Q and A, and the moderator is about to call in the first person, and this guy just pops up, commands the attention of the room, and he turns to the governor. He says. Mr. Governor, I'm the former chairman of the Israeli Water Utility, and I run one of the largest water industry conferences in the world—about 20,000 people. I've come to tell you that Israel is by far the global leader in water innovation startups. More companies, deals, dollars, and awards than any other geography in the world. But our home market is small, and we need to globalize to succeed. The problem is. There's no center of the industry. There's no Silicon Valley of water. We come to your state in California and other places for life sciences and IT, but where are we going to go for water? Now, Mr. Governor, I've been to your state many times, and you have an enormous water industry there, but the people in that industry don't really talk to each other very much, and the world doesn't know about them. If you can convene the industry in your state, Massachusetts could become the Silicon Valley of water. You'd succeed, and we'd have a place to grow into. Okay, so we just learned something about ourselves, and、uh, but it was a good idea, and that became a buzz of the trip. Could Massachusetts become the Silicon Valley of water? So, the governor asked the secretary and the delegation to answer two questions when we got back home. Number one, is there a global opportunity in water? Number two, does Massachusetts have unique assets and advantages? Are you ready for the answers? Yes. Are you ready for the answers? Yes. Here we go. The global water industry is half a trillion dollars. It's expected to double in less than ten years. This is quite large. It's larger, for example, than the entire global airline industry. Looking at it from a demand perspective, of course, demand is rising for water, driven by population. And more importantly, by demand for agricultural products and for manufacturing of goods that contribute to quality of life. Looking at it from a personal demand perspective, the UN defines basic water needs for drinking and washing as about 10 gallons a day. But if your typical Sunday morning includes a leisurely shower, reading the Sunday paper, and enjoying two eggs for breakfast, you've now used up your entire basic water needs for a whole month. On the supply side. Only three percent of the world's water is fresh water. Within that amount, actually, only 0.3 percent is water that is available to us for human consumption. That means that less than one percent of the world's water is available for you and me and seven billion other people. This is a problem you probably know about a little bit: the, the problem of demand and supply for water. How are these problems solved? Is there another side to water? Yes, the other side is innovation. Where does innovation in water come from? Well, among other places, Massachusetts. So, to answer the governor's question about Massachusetts' unique assets and advantages, I did some market research about the value chain of the water industry in our state. I started by looking at academia and research. Bless you. <laughs> It turns out that we have some of the best programs in the state at schools like MIT, Tufts, and UMass, and research institutes like Woods Hole and Marine Bio Lab. To look at the output of innovators in academia and research, I did a U.S. Patent Office search on five kinds of water innovation. Drinking water, wastewater, stormwater, coastal water, and industrial water. 
It turns out that Massachusetts is, Massachusetts is at or near the top in all categories of water innovation with more patents per capita than any other state in the country. This is the innovation that's in Massachusetts. You combine that with the entrepreneurialism that is Massachusetts, and you get a whole bunch of companies. For example, engineering firms that design and build water and wastewater systems around the globe. For example, from a company like CDM Smith, a $1.2 billion corporation that designs plants in places like Pakistan and Vietnam. 6,000 employees worldwide headquartered in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Or AECOM, which has a very significant presence in our state and uh, was the lead design and build for the $3.6 billion Deer Island treatment plant, a jewel of the Boston Harbor cleanup project. AECOM continues its presence in our state, designing and building projects around the globe in places like Texas and Saudi Arabia, but the work is done here in Massachusetts. So then I went to look at the goods and services firms that sell their products to industrial users, water utilities, and in residential applications. For example, Watts Water, a billion-dollar company in Massachusetts that makes the valves that are in your basement. Uh, or the global behemoth in the water industry, Siemens, which has two R&D headquarters for water, Singapore and Lowell, Massachusetts. Now, there's a lot of innovation that comes out of this sector in the industry. For example, there was a company known as Ionix. Ionix here developed the first desalination system in the world. And it's not because we do desalination very much in Massachusetts, but the in invention was here. Uh, and uh, they um, it, uh, grew this business enormously and, in fact, attracted a buyout, which was accepted, for $1.3 billion from GE. That first system now has spawned an entire industry of 16,000 desalination plants around the world. Or, if I can get personal for a second, if you've been to the bathroom today in the Seaport World Trade Center, you may not have noticed, but on the little val on the, the faucet, and at least in the men's room, inscripted right on there, it says Sloan Valve. Natan Parsons was washing his dishes in Brookline one day and was kind of disappointed with all the wasted water. So he went into his MIT lab, designed a solution, created a great new product, sold thousands of them, and then licensed it to Sloan Valve, and it is the sensor-activated faucet innovated here in Massachusetts. Are there any startups in our state in water? I found 31. They're working in the entire value chain of the industry. For example, a new form of water treatment called forward osmosis from a company called Oasis Water. Uh, or uh, a company that makes wave energy called Resolute Marine Energy, who is a prior presenter at TEDx Boston. These companies attract lots of VC dollars from Massachusetts VCs, like Flagship Capital, ATV, and also from Lots of foreign investors in Hong Kong and Japan bringing capital into our state. They win awards like the MIT 100K and the Mass Challenge Prize and uh, gather federal grants from the National Science Foundation, the Department of Energy, and also from the EPA. In a little study of EPA grants for commercializing water innovation, it turns out that the Boston area has received more EPA grants than any other metro area in the country. Now, have there been any mergers and acquisitions? Mergers and acquisitions are very important to investors to know that there's payback on their risk capital. There have been a ton. Here's a short list. The companies on the left side of the chart are major national and global companies. The companies in the middle are Massachusetts companies they acquired. In every case, when the major acquired the local, the major entered our state for the first time or extended, expanded its presence. This is the Massachusetts story. We are the innovators and entrepreneurs for the world, attracting outposts for innovation from, global, for, from Google, IBM, Microsoft, Novartis, Pfizer, and it's happening in water too. Of course, other geographies are interested in being water innovation clusters, like Israel, Singapore, and Colorado. 
But the question for today is, how does Massachusetts become the global innovation leader of the $500 billion water industry? First, we can convene our industry, as suggested to us in Israel, which the governor and secretary of energy environment, Rick Sullivan, did just last month at an event called the Symposium on Water Innovation in Massachusetts. <laughs> you like the acronym SWIM. Okay, thank you. I can't say I invented it, but... Um, so, at this event, there was 150 senior executives, 90 different companies involved, mostly at the CEO and president level, and they were resounding in their interest to convene the industry, figure out ways to work together to increase local innovation and global export. Second of all, we can tell our story. This poster-sized Massachusetts water industry market map captures all the different organizations and companies in the state suitable for framing for your home or office. <laughs> Third, we can reach out to other geographies. I'm looking forward to going back with other co-chairs in a delegation later this year on a Massachusetts water innovation mission to Israel to build partnerships, figure out common solutions that we can work on together, and attract ideas, talent, and capital to Massachusetts. I'm also looking forward to connecting to that former chairman of the Israeli water utility and say, look what you started, and, and thanks, it was a good idea. <laughs> Finally, perhaps most importantly, we need to do a better job of connecting to each other across the value chain of our industry. We have all the components of that industry. This is not trying to start a new thing. It already exists. Education, research, startups, engineering firms, utilities. We need to have a better dialogue. We need to be one degree of separation from each other. I look forward to the day when there is a world of abundant and clean water from innovators, and entrepreneurs from the great state of Massachusetts. Thank you very much. <laughs>